Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika. Today's video is going to be about five books that I've picked that I remember reading for my uni courses that I really liked. Which I know is a bit of a random video, but I just wanted to share this with you. Um, because I don't just want to talk about like all the things that I'm currently reading and all that. I also want to talk about some older things and things that I really like still, that I sort of, in my brain, it would still be a favorite, but that I, I read years ago. Um, and let's just start with where some of these things started for me, and that was university. If you don't know, I studied English, that was my major at university. I have a bachelor's and master's degree in English language and culture. And for that course, I of course had to read quite a lot of, yes, English literature. Um, there was English literature, I think, in every single semester I was at uni. Of course, the first couple of years, it's very much like general overview courses of like the big things that you had to know and like time periods and all that. Um, but definitely as time progressed and I had more say in what courses I wanted to do, I really enjoyed some of those courses. And that's why I wanted to share with you today what those books are that I still really remember, like reading for the first time for one of those courses, and that I would still like count as well, some of my favorite books today. There isn't a lot here. Uh, I've just selected five because a lot of the reading I had to do was in anthologies. <laughs> and that's very difficult, or like it was a handout given, or an ebook, or whatever. Um, so I ended up also not always reading all of the mandatory reading on the reading list because you essentially have to like read a book per week when you do a literature course and I sometimes took multiple ones at the same time. So I had to like pick and choose that I knew enough about all of the topics so I can take the exam and write the essays I had to write. So it was very calculating as a student, so I definitely didn't read everything. Um, and I definitely don't remember everything that vividly um, because it was more than a decade ago that I was at uni, but five books that were my standout reads from uni um, we are going to discuss right now. And the first one is at the top, and that's one of the ones I uh, read for a very late course. This is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James, and it was on, this was on the reading list for a gothic literature course that I took during my master's degree. Um, it had both British and American authors. So far, up until this point, I had only taken a uh, gothic course on American gothic literature. And gothic literature was like the thing when I was at uni. That was my favorite thing to read. I tried to do, read everything gothic related. And this is definitely a gothic classic. The Turn of the Screw, if you don't know what it's about, it's sort of about uh, it's a portmanteau where the story is being told by someone else to someone else. And it's sort of like one of those stories where you can ask yourself whether the main character is actually telling the truth or not. Um, because we get this account second hand. Of course, there may be a lot of like, like, there's a big bit of a gray area here. And also the sanity uh, of one of the main characters in this book is definitely sort of at play. I don't remember a whole lot about it, even though I did reread it afterwards. Um, and that's why I know so much about these books, because all of these have been rereads for me um, that I actually picked up later again. So these were th things I was still interested in. This is just a really short novel. So this is a great one if, for instance, you want to hit your Goodreads reading goal and uh, you don't know how. This only has like just over 100 pages, uh, 120 it seems, yeah, 120 pages. So it's a nice short read. It's also very readable. A lot of classic literature can be a bit of a chore. And you have to like churn on and on and on and on. This is not one of those. This, I, this is one I feel that is very easy to read. And it's just one that I really enjoyed and I go back to every once in a while to read it. Next up is definitely an OG. You can see by how splayed these pages are that this probably got waterlogged at some point or whatever happened to this, I don't know. But this is Dracula by Bram Stoker. And this is the Penguin Classic Edition that I probably had to buy for my Victorian lit course in my second year. Um, this was one that I read and absolutely loved. It's definitely one of the tougher reads. I feel because it's all these like just like letters and like accounts and it's just not the easiest in terms of 
how the story is set up, I would have to say. It is a great story. Uh, I think that if you've only seen movie versions of this, you're going to be greatly disappointed because this is not an action-packed, like, ooh, vampires, let's go kill them kind of story. Um, it definitely isn't. It's very slow-paced, uh, especially if you watch like the Netflix series and all that. It's definitely not a book that will sort of really keep the pace going for you. So if you're a modern reader coming to this um, right now, about a, over a hundred years after it was written, this is definitely the kind of book that works in the time period, I feel. Um, so you do have to approach this and sort of read it bit by bit. That's how I would re recommend reading it, just to keep yourself going. This is the kind of book where you sort of read a couple of the letters or a couple of chapters and then you need to put it down again. Uh, because you also sometimes just need to process what's going on in here. Um, and I think that in terms of like characters in here, they are definitely a lot more enjoyable in the book, I feel, than they are in a lot of the movies and TV adaptations that I've seen. Then, another second year course favorite was Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I had to read this for a romantic literature course um that sort of had like you know Nicole Ridge and like all these other big names in it and of course also some Shelley uh I think her husband was in the course too uh this was of course the story she wrote because of like this being stuck in Switzerland and then this sort of book came out of that again like Dracula I feel that if you start reading the original it's very different from like movie adaptations and the things that Hollywood and other directors and things have done to this. This is again not very exciting when you read it. It's definitely slow paced. It's much more and that's why it fits into that like romantic sort of time period. It's very much an exploration of what is beautiful, what is ugly, what is like ethics. Those kind of things are very much at play in this book. Um, and it's of course um, Again, not as fast-paced and action-packed as you might expect. This is a bit of a shorter read than Dracula, so I feel it's a bit more manageable. And again, I have reread this uh, ever since I uh, started reading it. And this was one that I picked up secondhand, actually. Um, so yeah, this is, um, this is just one of those classics that I, I know I can go back to and I, I will enjoy the story. Let's stick to sort of like, I think this was also in my second year at uni, yes. I took a course in gothic fiction and Richard Matheson's I Am Legend was on that reading list. It was only American authors and it also had some more modern things on it. And this is one of those stories that was sort of like vampire novels didn't really happen much for most of the 19th century and then this happened. Yes, this is vampires. If you saw the movie with Will Smith, I don't. There, it's hinted at that they might be some sort of zombie. Uh, but I Am Legend is most definitely a vampire story if you read the book. And the book is very different from the movie that I've seen with Will Smith that has a very positive ending and this one doesn't. This is, I would, I would categorize this as a dystopian, like ultimately. It's a very dystopian story. Uh, humanity has pretty much passed away because of this virus that turned everyone into a vampire and the main character is the last man standing kind of thing. That's the trope that's going on in here. I thought this was very cleverly written. It's a bit of a misprint because of these pages here that haven't been cut properly. Um, and this is again very short, very sweet, and this is just one of those books that you can again breeze through quite easily. I'm not going to give away too much about this story because if I give it away the clue then it is a bit of a sad thing, but um, yeah, in this book, it's very clear that we're dealing with vampires and not some sort of like zombie thing that he starts to hunt down. Uh, actually, in the, in the book, he doesn't hunt anyone down. He is being hunted. <laughs> so, and that, that's very clear straight from the bat, like from, a, from the start of the story, it's very clear that he is a target uh, because they're trying to get to him. Um, so very, very different from anything that, if you've seen the movie, nothing like it. Nothing at all. It's, it could have been as if some, it was a completely different story. Just saying. And then, last but not least, I want to mention this. And this is Wella Cather's The Song of the Lark. This is a book I had to read for a master's course on 
what was it was called American regionless literature. So apparently at the end, the end of the 19th century in the US, a lot of writing was very influenced by the area of the country where the author lived. And Willa Cather's a so The Song of the Lark is also going back to where Willa Cather originally was from, which is Arizona. So it's sort of like frontier America and like the making of the country is very much sort of central to this. And I just love this story. It's a coming of age, age story about a Swedish immigrant family and their daughter, Thea Kronberg, who is so into music and she lives in a small town in Arizona and she's trying to chip away and make her life. And in the end, she becomes a very famous opera singer in New York. And you sort of get her entire life story from when she's a little girl and first starting to take singing lessons and like the things she does and doesn't do. And then she started te starts teaching the kids in the town and then the town isn't big enough and she wants to go to New York and all of that. So it's very much, it's just a very well and beautifully written story that because of its size, I mean, this is like a good couple of hundred pages. Uh, it's like over 400. This is one you do need to take your time for just to take in the beauty of the story and the way it's been written. This is the book that after I graduated has always stuck with me as one of my all time favorite books. These ones I like as well. I think some of them make it into like my top 15, but this is like almost at the top of that list just because this just impacted me so much and it was just the right book at the right time. And it's just not something that I know I would never have read if it hadn't been for that course. So that's why this had definitely ha had to be mentioned here most definitely. So there you have it, five books that I read during my uni years that have stuck with me for what for whatever reason. Uh, a lot of gothic fiction because that's ultimately what my courses were like. What I really liked about courses was if things were dark and like a little bit gory, like I always liked that. So I still like that. Bit of fantasy, bit of like detectiveness kind of stuff. These, again, like when I did my childhood rereads video, this also encapsulates a lot of the things that I still really like about the books that I read. So I like coming of age stories. I like vampires till this day. I like a bit of urban fantasy and I like like detective mystery kind of things like you get in Henry James. I really like unreliable narrators that you get in Henry James. And I really like things that are beautifully written, have a bit of like almost magical realism to it, which I think you get a little bit in like Willa Cather as well, like this sort of like, it's not necessarily magical realism per se, but there's just something about the way that book has been written that makes me understand why I like magical realism elements in books. Uh, and the same goes for Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, like these sort of like, like what's behind it all. I kind of, I still like that. So this is sort of, again, been very formative for my reading habits, you could say. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make one new video on this channel every week and they go live on Friday at 6 p.m. Central European time. I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.